Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jean, the Digital Event Coordinator at Connecting Up and TechSoup New Zealand. We are part of the Info Exchange Group, a not for profit social enterprise that tackles the biggest social challenges by creating use of technology. Today, I'm very excited to welcome you to join CRM Fundamental, organizing your data is non negotiable for NFPs with Socha. Sasha is the Director of Strategic Partnership at Nation Builder. She manages customer relationships and strategic partnerships for the host of the most influential political, brand, and not-for-profit organizations around the world. She is the political strategy leader, committed to building community in an effort to develop more effective leaders for all walks of life. Before we begin, we'll start with a bit of housekeeping. All lines are muted. If you have any technical issues, please type into the questions box and I'll be here to assist you. And also, if you have any questions during the webinar, please also type into the questions box and Sotcha will answer them during or at the end of the webinar. We really encourage you to ask as many questions as possible. There's no questions silly. And um, please note that your comments and questions will not be appear to the entire group. Please also note that the webinar is being recorded. The recording deck and the presentation will be sent to you in one to two business days. Finally, I would like to remind you that there's a short survey at the end of the webinar. Please help us to complete the survey for an even better experience in the future. Thank you very much. Now I would like to pass on to Sasha for today's section. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. And hi everyone. Really excited to be with you all today. Um, as Jean gave me a lovely glowing introduction, uh, I won't bore you with that, but I will just kind of give you a little bit of info on who I am. I'm Sasha. I have been with Nation Builder for six and a half years. Um, I'm based here in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, so it is 7 p.m. for me, so excited to be coming to you this evening. And I have worked in the nonprofit, political, and advocacy space for the last kind of 15 years, um, from consultative to digital engagement, and in the last six, I uh, have done so through the lens of Nation Builder. So I am going to share my screen, and we will dive right in. So let's get all right everyone's seeing that brilliant so we build software that builds movements what does that actually mean so what that actually means is the four core components of nation Builder. what we're going to be focusing on today is that dynamic crm the concept of having a crm that you can use to manage your audience and absolutely build a community and organize your data in the way that's most powerful for you we also have a communication suite where you can email your audience and engage with them through communications methods. We then have a CMS, a content management system. That's where you are able to have your front facing engagement, so your website, your pages. And last but definitely not least in the not for profit world is our fundraising suite where you have the ability to collect donations, to create fundraisers, to actively engage with your audience in your fundraising programs. To start us off, I want to ground us in this concept of our product principles. Up first and most relevant for today's conversation is this concept of owning your own data. Your data is yours. Your data has to be yours for you to build a thriving community. Your data also has to be safe. You have to trust the entities at which you're working with and ensure that your data set is safe. You also need to be able to access it, to build into it, and ultimately take it with you if the relationship you have with your CRM is not what you need. That is a core principle and a product principles of Nation Builders, and it has been for the 12 years that we've been around. Our second core product principle is to put people at the center. The concept with putting people at the center starts at the top when you're finding your people, when you're identifying the audience you want to be in relationship with. You need to personalize your outreach to really identify to those individuals that you care about what they care about. And then ultimately find your leaders. Be 
be able to identify the top 5% of your organization that are genuinely bringing that word of mouth to the great work that you are each doing. Up next is moving people to action. This ability to not just build lists, to actually build movements. You can't just have a spreadsheet, right? You need to then be able to actively engage with these people. You also have to think about being able to develop your supporters, right? Thinking about each individual as a person, not a collective list. You need to use a website for action. It's great to have a beautiful website that has lots of pictures, but if there is nothing on there for someone to do, they are going to disengage. You are dealing with an attention economy where we have over 70 people, over 70% of people at any given time are interacting with at least three screens. That's your cell phone, your laptop, your TV, right? There are a lot of things that are pulling people in different directions. And so you have to make sure that yours is the right call to action that's personalized and ready for that person to move them from A to B. You also want to automate where is optimal for you. So think about things like when someone takes an action on your site, whether that's signing a petition or signing up to volunteer, that they immediately receive an auto response and that then takes them on a personal journey. And lastly, in this bucket of moving people to action is meeting them where they're at. We'll talk more about this as we get into the content today, but if 90% of your audience you don't have an email address for, then where are they? Where can you communicate with them? Really, really important that you understand how to meet people where they're at. The last product principle that grounds the Nation Builder software is this ability to distribute leadership. The concept of being able to equip your leaders, equip those 5%, that top 5%, and so that can be people who have volunteered more than 10 times, who've attended you know, five events, who've opened 80% of the emails you've sent, who've donated a certain threshold. Those people are your leaders, but you have to equip them. If you don't, it's just going to be top down and people don't respond to that anymore. You need to incentivize peer engagement. <laughs> Excuse me. Peer engagement looks like identifying that top 5% and asking them to recruit people in. Yes, you can absolutely pay to acquire new supporters, but you'll notice that the retention of people you purchase versus people you build relationships with is drastically different. And lastly, allow for individuals to build their own networks. This all feeds in to the idea of being able to have a single source of truth, which is what a CRM will really do for you. A CRM stands for a Customer Relationship Management Tool. And so there are a number of amazing organizations that we work with in the Australia and New Zealand region from high stake movements and campaigns and association efforts. And as we build and evolve our platform, we're constantly studying the history and science of community building always actually trying to figure out what actually moves people to action or to do something. There are several organizing best practices that we've baked into our platform, but underlying it all is a recognition of a really important shift that is taking place, <clears throat> excuse me, across the globe. And that is that influence doesn't come from authority anymore. It comes from trust. That shift is that in order to make change, we need influence. And that influence is not coming from that traditional concept of authority, but from trust. It comes from trust because influence now comes from relationships. And there's no way to have a good relationship or multiple good relationships without trust. So a lot about uh, this whole webinar is going to be about trust, how to build it in order to organize people and data I don't know about all of you, but when a friend of mine tells me I should do something or I should go to something, I am much more likely to do that because they told me than if I am to see an ad about three or four or seven times. I think it's very likely that everyone in this virtual room with me agrees. At the end of the day, we are much more likely to engage with a peer-to-peer -peer activity. But why is that? It's because we know that person. We know that where they're actually coming from, they want is best for us, that they're not trying to kind of sell us a bag of goods. We trust them. We need to be able to create this sort of trust in scale to actually build and organize a thriving data set that you can engage actively with your community. So 
the first lesson in today's conversation is about this concept of saving your relationships. So to do that, I want you to, to kind of really think here. If there is anything that you listen to me say today or write down from this webinar, it should be to save your relationships. And we're gonna go on a little bit of a journey here before we come back to the digital. So like we just talked about trust, right? It comes from feeling heard, from that feeling of being safe and valued. Imagine if you met someone a week ago at a friend's dinner party, and then you run into them in the grocery store. You smile, you stop to say hello because you had a great conversation at dinner. That person looks extremely confused and embarrassingly admits that they don't remember where they know you from. We've all been there, I know I have. But you then remind them about the dinner party and they still kind of look puzzled, right? This interaction becomes awkward and you honestly quickly leave, not wanting to make that person feel you know, any worse for forgetting who you were in the context in which you met. That same exact situation can happen digitally on a larger scale with people that actually care about your cause. And it is a situation that can truly leave a person feeling unheard and extremely undervalued. So to remedy this, you have to, have to get organized, save your relationships, which means owning and storing your own data. So let's actually talk a little bit more about this in the digital sense. So like we talked about at the top, right? Those four core product principles. That first one has always been a part of Nation Builder, which is to own your own data. Our customers' data is and always will be their own. We don't share it, monetize it, or otherwise exploit any data set of our customers or their supporters. Our business model actually relies on people choosing to purchase our software period. And when you're building a community, it is vital to know who those people are. And while social media is a fantastic way to disseminate and amplify your message, it isn't actually the best place to build your community, as you don't own those individual relationships. Some of you might be asking, what the heck is she talking about? Who, what is she engaging with? What I'm talking about here is when algorithms dictate what a supporter should engage with, you as the organization are not ultimately able to build trust with that individual. If you're starting to think about, or you're already doing it, right? You're already building a community online. A CRM where you can own your own data is a must to actually build trust with your supporters. It's the value of relationship tracking, whether that's person to person or person to organization. We as Nation Builder are constantly leaning into demands for accountability and data privacy. And we're encouraging our customers to honestly do the same. We have plans to roll out a bunch of kind of advanced consent features outside of what we already have, but we'll talk about that in later sessions. So what I really now wanna get into is some practical advice. What kinds of information should you as nonprofit leaders be saving? Well, at first, you've got that personal data set, right? So think about name, address, phone number. This type of data is pretty expected when you're collecting information from supporters and no one's gonna be surprised at it, right? It's gonna be really helpful for you to build your relationship long time. You also might wanna think about things that are really common to your organization, to your nonprofit. Things that you need from your community. Maybe age is actually a really helpful data point for you because of how you interact with people. Maybe it's actually you run a bunch of events and you provide food and meals at those events and you need dietary preferences. Those are all kind of personal data sets. Then we want to flip into this idea of contextual data. And contextual data is where you can really start to paint the full picture of the individual. When I'm talking about tags, tags is a way to identify an attribute about an individual. So that could be that they care about dogs or that they really enjoy a particular issue that you care about or that they're a donor or that they attended an event. It's an attribute about an individual. You also wanna think about there, some email correspondence. Maybe it's phone calls that you've logged or information that you have about interacting with this person during a live event. At the end of the day, the more contextual data you have, the better a picture you're able to paint as you start to actively build relationships with these folks. 
a really, really simple way of organizing this kind of information without having to buy any software is using Excel or Google Sheets. In the spreadsheet, the person can be represented by a row of information and each data point like name, address, phone number will be a column. I really, really don't advise using a Word document, although I have seen it done many times. Excel spreadsheets or even a Google Sheet or any kind of spreadsheet is ideal because what that's ultimately going to let you do is later on when you've got more people, right? You've built this thriving community, you're going to then be able to action and organize within that data set versus if you have it in a document, it will be static. So now let's actually look at a specific example of what I'm talking about here. We're going to have Frodo Baggins, one of my favorite from Lord of the Rings, and we're going to pretend that he's one of our supporters and we're using a spreadsheet to see all of the data and all of the things we know about him. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Here, we can see that it appears on this spreadsheet, right? We've got his contact details, his phone number, his address, some notes on the fact that Bilbo is his friend, right? We've got some kind of baseline understanding of that individual. This is where we are able to really kind of just identify the basic information we have on this individual. If I click again, what we're going to see here now is all of the notes that I had right after Bilbo, fundraiser dinner, member, dance party, webinar, all of those things, that contextual data set. I've now transferred that into a tag. So think about tags like a virtual sticky note, right? It tells you something about the person without having to write a sentence or a phrase. It's shorthand really, and you get to be the one that actually designs how this shorthand is written. And the most important thing is that you're able to read and understand what it means. So let me run you through this specific example. So the first tag is called event attendee. Then we have a dash fundraiser 2018. That's letting me know that this event was specifically a fundraiser. If I move into our member, we then have a dash of 2020. We're getting really kind of granular about the, um, the dates and time periods at which uh, these tags were appended to this individual's record. So the tags that I've just described capture more information than those four columns that we originally had up top, right? That's really what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get as much information as possible in a really manageable way. And this way of saving information gives me a better picture about Frodo. So what I just showed you are spreadsheets. And now what we're going to look at is how does that flip into kind of a 360 profile when we have a CRM in place. So now what you are not seeing, now what you are seeing is what that looks like in a CRM. So this is Nation Builder CRM, and this is kind of as close as you get to Frodo Baggins in real life. The other thing to note here is that we actually use tags in our daily life without even knowing it. So if you think about that dinner example I talked about earlier, when we saw that person that we met at the supermarket, the image of the dinner party may have come to mind. The face of that mutual friend that introduced us may have also come to mind. Maybe an image of the conversation that you had with this person, right? Those three pieces of information that came to our mind help us put together the context of this individual and therefore we would then communicate with them accordingly. This is exactly the same things as those tags, but it allows you to do it digitally to ultimately be able to actively engage with them. When you're looking at the CRM example, we can see those four tags on his profile, right? We, maybe we automatically added that member tab because he came to a event and he signed up to be a member. Or maybe he took an action that automatically appended some of those other tags. It's really important that you kind of get yourself thinking right now on the ways in which you are using your data. And if you have any types of data sets that I just outlined, when you think about tags, that you could kind of put into this way in terms of categorizing individuals. Okay, 
So let's kind of jump into just a second to pause. So take some time, right? Stop, reflect. How are you currently saving and storing data? Pop questions in the chat. I would love to hear from folks. I kind of will pose a couple of questions just to kind of get us thinking. So how can you improve what it is that you're currently doing? What do you need to do first to be able to improve it? Do you currently have a spreadsheet? Do you currently have a CRM? What does it look like? How are you saving that data? How is that data getting in to your CRM? These are all really important questions. Some other questions when I've given this presentation um, in previous spaces is one around membership updates and how a CRM could help when there are new members signing up every day, but that becomes a daily task, right? So how does a CRM help for memberships? <clears throat> that really depends on your implementation. Um, and so if folks have questions about memberships in particular, please pop them in the chat. I would, I'd love to answer. Um, I'll give it a couple of seconds, and if not, we'll move on to the to the next section. No, all right. Well, pop them in as they come up. Okay, so up next, we're going to talk about the ask for information. So. Here we can see that photo appears as a role in the spreadsheet, right? We are now able to see that photo lives in the CRM. But what's the most important thing for us to think about here? The most important thing here is to think about the opportunity to gain invaluable data sets. So this is where you start to think about what are the different activities? What are the different actions that I ask of my community? How do I have them engage with me? Maybe it's signing a petition. Maybe it's you know becoming a member, attending an event, receiving swag. So think bumper stickers, or maybe it's a baseball cap or a jumper. Allowing them to tell their story. This is so valuable because you basically give them the floor to talk about what it is that's important to them. This can be really useful to your organization as marketing tools. Using video is king. We know that right now. It is the thing that social media platforms drive for. It is how people get noticed. Um, so if you're getting your stories of the people that are in your supporter base, that's gonna be really valuable content for you to continue to grow your audience. Maybe you're giving them the opportunity to volunteer or join a local group or donate. Donating is a very hard ask. It's a big ask, right? It's a financial contribution. And so I always recommend to nonprofits that I work with that it's not the only and it's definitely not the first ask. It's really important when you are building relationships that you aren't just asking people constantly for money, but you're actually adding value. The thing I really want everyone to kind of think about here is these are all different types of opportunities. And I've worked with so many nonprofits that don't have a CRM or aren't using the spreadsheet to track this, but are ultimately just letting it live within social media, which is fine, right? If that is what you want to do, but it's not the best way to build community and to actively organize your database. So I'm going to kind of run through now some social media. Um, so first off, we're going to head over to Twitter. And I'm going to show you some good examples of posts with a clear call to action. So you can see here that each of these have this link. That person, anyone who's interacting with this, then has the ability to leave the social media platform and then start a relationship with Global Citizen in this example. But with your audience, you have the opportunity to take them from that platform and then build a real relationship with them to organize your data. Now, if we have a look at Facebook, this is an example of some engaging content that's asking someone to do something as opposed to just liking and sharing. It's really important when you're thinking about how do I authentically build relationships with people so that I can organize my data so that I can be a more successful nonprofit, asking them to do something. This is around deepening the engagement just beyond a social media relationship. And now finally, we're going to have a look at Instagram, where things are a little bit different. 
In Instagram, you're not able to add a clickable link directly to the post. So you'll see in this example that they are prompting folks to click the link in the bio. Again, this is all about making sure that it is the easiest way for your supporters to actively engage with you and building the relationship so that you can own the data. So are you currently using calls to action? Are you currently giving people a way to engage with you? That is not just a like or a comment. Anyone have any questions or want to put anything in the chat right now? I just want to make sure that uh, where well, like where's the group at? I can't see your faces, so it's hard for me to know. Um, sure, Sacha, we got a uh, Sabrine. She got a couple of questions. If you can see that, thank you. Oh, here we are. Um, where am I based? I am based in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, our company is a global company. Um, so we have folks in Melbourne and in Sydney, um, and our headquarters is in Los Angeles. And then does it integrate with Stripe? Uh, yes, so Nation Builder's payments platform is built on Stripe. Um, and then I am not sure what XERO is, so I don't believe we have an integration, but we do have hundreds of integrations, so I may not know every single one of them. Um, so I can follow up with Jean if we do have an integration there. The one thing I will point out is that Nation Builder does have a active integration with Zapier. And Zapier is just a way for you to connect different platforms with each other. And so if this platform does have a Zapier account, you are automatically able to integrate. Does it allow for emailing donors within the CRM? Yes. So Nation Builder's platform, there are those four core pillars. So we've got the CRM. Your communications is where you can email, your fundraising tool, which is um, powered by Stripe, and then our CMS, which is your front-facing website. Um, brilliant. Thank you for all of those questions. That was really helpful. Um, all right, I know that you're out there. That's great. <laughs> okay, so now we're back to another reflection. Reflect on how you're actually using social media to reach your supporters. What's actually, what are you doing with it, right? What is the way in which you are currently using social media to build and engage with your audience? It's not just about the vanity metrics, as I like to call it, right? The likes, how many likes did you get? How many shares did you get? That's not actually an indication of a relationship that you've built which is ultimately what you need to be able to organize your data set. So again, some questions just to kind of prompt yourself and as you kind of ruminate on this content later today, how can you improve what you're doing? Is there anything missing, right? What does it look like to add URLs to every single post? How do you add calls to action? Does it make sense for your content strategy to have calls to action in every single post? It might not, maybe it's a once a week. That's going to vary from organization to organization. So it's really important that when you're thinking about these questions, you're doing it in your context. All right. So now I'm going to move into a demonstration. So we have learned all about asking followers to engage with us. Where are we going to send them? Some of you may already have websites and some of you may be using spreadsheets and other CRMs. I'm gonna show you how CRMs can be helpful to saving those relationships. I'm gonna be demonstrating with Nation Builder, but there are several other CRMs as well as, like I said earlier, those spreadsheets. So up first, we are gonna go into the front-facing site within a Nation Builder um, website. So let me just pop out a full screen here. Um, it's a cloud accounting software. Oh, awesome, thank you. Um, okay. So let me make sure that everyone is seeing this. Brilliant. So this is a Nation Builder website. I have built this in kind of like 30 minutes by myself. Um, I'm not a website designer by any way, shape or form. Um, Nation Builder has templates that are kind of out of the box that you can just add your logo, add your words, um, and you're ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take an action on this website. So I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to jump into the future of school library funding. This is a petition page. 
we have a number of different page types within Nation Builder that you can use based on the action you're trying to drive. So we're going to come back to our good old friend Frodo Baggins, and we are going to say that he is interested in signing this petition. Frodo Baggins at baggins.com. It's mobile is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, zero. And he is going to be in. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. Do we have? Um, and now here I'm going to say send me email and send me text and I'm going to add my signature to this petition. The first thing you're going to notice here is what we call a social share prompt. A social share prompt allows with literally the click of a button with the person who's just taken an action to share this out to social. If we think right back to the top of today's presentation where I talked about um, incentivizing peer-to-peer -peer engagement, this is exactly what that is. This allows these, your supporters to share it out with their network that they're supporting you on email, Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. The power of this, it actually gives a unique URL. So this is a URL specifically for Frodo, where he will receive credit for anyone who clicks on his link. So if Frodo was to tweet this out right now, he would, and I, Sorsha, went on and I clicked on and I signed the petition because Frodo shared it. Frodo would get credit for having recruited me, brought me into the organization. So I'm going to say no thanks for now. But the next thing you'll notice is what we call action chains. So the first action that Frodo took was signing a petition. The second action that we want him to do is now signing up to volunteer. What you're going to notice here is that Frodo's information is already filled in. So it says, hey, Frodo. It also gives me an option now to log out if I'm not Frodo. And now here I can identify, I am gonna do a couple of these things. And yes, here I am going to identify that I'm available at 2 p.m. on Saturday and 5 p.m. on Sunday. Right, so that's that contextual data. I am giving this organization some contextual data about when I am available to help them. Again, my information is pre-populated, and so I don't have to do anything else because everything is there. And I can go ahead and I can save my volunteer info. Again, I'm immediately prompted to share this out with my friends and family. I can send it on all of these platforms if I would like. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say no thanks for now. And the next action chain that I've created here is just a simple thank you page. So this is thanking individuals for the work that they are doing to help us with my specific organization. So that is the front facing site. That's how someone engages with your website content. So if we think about that call to action, where you're actually driving people to engage with, to build that relationship, to actually build organizing into your practice. Now I'm gonna jump over into what we call the control panel. So this is the back end of Nation Builder. Before I kind of go into the specifics of what just happened with Frodo, I want to kind of acclimate you all. So on the left hand side, we have our pillars of Nation Builder that we talked about. So we've got our people, which is our database, that's your CRM. Your website, that's your content management system, your CMS. Our communications tools, that's where you can send email blasts. Our workflows, that's where you can actually send automated email blasts. So for example, being able to say, um, if someone signs this petition, they receive an auto response. Two days later, they then get another email. And then two weeks later, they get another email, as an example. And last but definitely not least, this is our finances section. So that is where you are able to manage all of your donations, um, your fundraisers, anyone who is pledging a certain amount. Um, and to Sabina's questions earlier, 
the Nation Builder payment processor is powered by Stripe. Okay, and we have, um, and I will make sure to put this in the follow up email as well. Um, we do have preferential nonprofit rates um, for any of our nonprofit customers, and obviously, as a Connecting Up member, um, you would be eligible for the specific discount um, to Nation Builder software. Okay. So now that we've kind of gone through what the platform covers, I want to show you specifically what happened when Frodo Baggins interacted with the front facing site. So immediately, if we come here, we're going to jump into the activity stream. So this is going to give you a running stream of every single thing that is taking place in your nation. You're always going to get top line information right here. So you can see the number of supporters, volunteers, how much donations have been made, how many unique donors there are. But what I really care about right now is everything that just happened to Frodo Baggins just by a couple of clicks on the front facing site. So here we are five minutes ago, Frodo became a supporter. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click into Frodo Baggins. And once we are in the Frodo Baggins profile, you'll notice that we are now in the people section by that blue icon on the left. So within the individual's profile, we are seeing a fully built out 360 view of Frodo Baggins just by the way in which he engaged with the front facing site. This happened automatically. There was no need for it to go into a spreadsheet uh, or for you to actually have to physically manually take that out of your CMS. It just happens automatically. Here we have all of the basic information that Frodo put in from his address to his contact number. And we can also immediately identify that he is a volunteer and that he is a supporter of the organization based on the actions he took. Then we come down and you'll notice some nation builder specific things. The first thing I want to point out here is this concept of a point person. If you think back to our core product principles, what the last one being able to distribute leadership, this is how you can distribute leadership within your own organization. The point person concept is means that Erica is now responsible for the relationship with Frodo Baggins. So what that technically means is that she will have just received an email to let her know that Frodo Baggins signed up on a petition page and that he wants to volunteer. So she will now be responsible for building that relationship with Frodo to make sure that he actually does those things and you know, maybe deepen that relationship, have him become a fundraiser. The next thing you'll see are those tags that we talked about. And so all of these landed on Frodo's profile just from him taking that action. So you will notice that we have the petition signer tag. So that's from the first petition that he signed. You'll also notice all of those little volunteer tags. So you've got the book sorting, the contacting legislatures, opening and closing the library, as well as being a social ambassador. And then we have this kind of catch all tag for volunteer on the website in 2021. Every single one of those were automatically added to his profile just by him having taken the action on the front facing site. But let's say I'm on a call with Frodo. Maybe I am, I'm Erica and I have received word that Frodo has signed up through that email notification. So I give him a call. And as I'm talking to him, I identify that he also is, you know, very passionate about accessible place spaces. So I can manually add that tag to his profile. And now the next time I engage with Frodo, I'm able to see that he also cares about accessible place spaces as well as the future of school library funding. It's very easy to interact with these concept of tags. The next thing that I want to show you here that's very nation builder specific is really around that idea of moving people to action. What you're noticing right here are two paths. A path is a digital ladder of engagement. A ladder of engagement is basically how do I get someone from A to B, to C, to D. And then all of the things that I need to do in between A, B, C, and D. It's really important when you're thinking about deepening relationships and building community with people and doing it digitally, right? It's really scalable when you think about how do I you know, manage the fact that this individual wants to become a movement ambassador 
as well as a volunteer, maybe also a donor and a fundraiser, right? This is designed so that you can do that at scale and you can do it digitally. So what does it actually look like? Here, we have this idea of becoming a movement ambassador. What you're going to notice is that there are a number of different steps. The first is this idea of being a potential ambassador. So maybe you are identifying people in your database using your contextual data points to say, this person has the potential to become an ambassador. Those contextual data points could be things like, what's their influence? How many um, followers do they have on a specific um, platform of choice? Um, I see a question from Sabine. Does your CRM integrate with existing websites or do you need a website created within the CRM? We do integrate um, with existing websites. Yes, uh, so we, you can either do a subdomain where you have action pages built on Nation Builder um, or you can iframe in Nation Builder pages into your current website. That's a really good question. Um, okay, so. The other thing to note about these paths is that you are able to just move people along. So yes, Frodo was automatically added when he engaged with the site. But again, if I'm talking to him live or if I see that he's attended an event, I'm able to just manually move it along, right? I'm moving him along that journey and building and deepening the relationship that I have with Frodo. Now, if I scroll down here, this is what we call the activity box. This allows you to interact with Frodo, whether that's an internal note for your team, sending a one-to-one -one email to Frodo, logging a contact. So actually being able to say, I spoke to Frodo, this is the context of the information. It was a meaningful interaction. You can also log that to a specific path and identify, you know, is he a strong supporter? And then also the priority level. I find that the priority level is so important for nonprofits in particular, because you do have different priorities of how people are engaging with your organization, whether that is a super volunteer that's recruiting, you know, hundreds of people for you, or it's someone who is a massive fundraiser. Those might be weighted differently. And this is a really great way for you to be able to assess that when you are organizing your data. And then last thing I want to show you in this individual person view is the ability, the same way you had for the entire nation, you get it on an individual level as well. So you are able to see from the moment at which Frodo, you know, joined the nation or joined your organization, everything that happened with a specific timestamp. So if I hover over this five minutes, you're going to get that timestamp. It's a really great way for just a full activity, activity log of how your supporters are engaging but also for you to be able to understand how your staff and how your volunteers are interacting with the people in your database. So two more things that I wanna kind of share with you today um, is this has all been about the individual person, right? The individual that you're building a relationship with. But the whole premise of a CRM is to make that scalable. And so to do that, to actually do this and engage at scale, what you lean on is that contextual data and that personal data to be able to identify trends. And once you're able to identify trends, you're then able to kind of backfill into your communications plan of how you want to engage with these individuals. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to identify every single person in the nation that has our petition signer future of school library funding. So to do that, I'm going to simply click on this tag. And what's going to happen is the database is going to pull a filter of every single person who has signed this petition. So we're seeing right now that we have a healthy audience of 1,761 people. I'm going to trim that down based on the number of people who are actually able to be emailed. So I typed in to identify that criteria, and now I'm going to hit filter. And that's going to give me 1,759. So now I'm going to continue. I'm going to make it even a little bit smaller, and I am going to scope this down to city. 
because I want it to be targeted, right? I wanna use that information so that I can really get an understanding for where these people are and make sure I'm communicating with them in the best way possible. Great. Now I have a really tight knit audience of 11 people who signed my petition, I'm able to communicate with them via an email and they all live in the same location. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to save this filter. I don't wanna reinvent the wheel every single time I come back to find people who've engaged with our petition that are contactable, right? I can send them an email and that live in Sydney. So I'm gonna save it. This is going to be my Sydney petition signers. Awesome. And so what that means is I don't now have to create that filter over and over again. That just automatically exists and it is not something I have to worry about. But the real power of this is now I can communicate with this audience. I've identified who the people are that I want to engage with. And now I can go over here. And this is the last thing I really want to show you all today is how you can now actually engage with them. So to do that, I'm going to jump over into our communications tab. Within Nation Builders software, you have the ability to have an unlimited number of what we call broadcasters. Broadcasters are just the voice of your organization. There should be multiple broadcasters. The more you have, the better we see our customers have engagement. So think your executive director, maybe your fundraising director, maybe you have a volunteer coordinator or an event specialist. Each of those are different voices, they're different tones, and your people should know how to you know, receive that content. And so it's an intentional. You should have different voices for your different engagements. So I'm gonna stick with our executive director, and we are going to go ahead and create an email together. So over here, I'm gonna hit new email blast, and we are going to have this be an event invitation Sydney event 2021. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my subject line. We want you to RSVP now. I'm being direct and to the point. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my blast. Here, now I get to pick. I get to say, what kind of theme do I want? What look and feel? I can scroll down, there's a bunch that I can choose from, but I'm gonna go ahead and be boring and I'm gonna go with that basic with logo. And honestly, I, uh, just so you all know, we're doing an email deliverability session as well. Um, the basic with logo is gonna help you land in more inboxes. Um, so for those of you who are excited about this type of content, I'm excited to see you in, in that session soon. So now I've got my basic with logo and here, this is what it's gonna look like. So on the right hand side is where I can actually go in and I can create the email of my dreams, right? So I'm gonna say first name or friend. And this is really the power of an integrated platform. You are able to use that personal and contextual data and render it back to your individuals. And it looks like you're sending one-on-one -on -one emails. So again, this is getting at the heart of making it scalable to truly organize your data. So first name or friend, very basic data that we're pulling in there, but important nonetheless. You know, we really need you to come out on Sunday to the coffee, bean, and support the kids. How can you turn that down, right? Okay, so... I'm now gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some context. And that context is going to be unique to every single person. So the first thing I'm gonna say is thank you for your donations of, and now I'm gonna add some contextual data. So to do that, I'm gonna add a smart field. And that smart field over here, I get to choose from all of the data that I have on this individual that they've given me, that they've consented to. So I'm gonna say donations year to date and add that smart field. So that's gonna be unique to every single person in this audience. So thank you for your donations of 
and that will be my cumulative total. We really can't do it without you. And now the last thing I'm going to add to be nice and punchy is those big buttons that you see in all the emails. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add a button. My button text is going to read RSVP. They are going to come to nationbuilder.com. And my text color, sure, that can be white. I'm going to make my text font a little bit bigger though. Let's go with 40. My background color, I'm going to go for a, a nice green. Why not? And I am going to center my button. And beautiful. I'm very happy with that. It looks appealing. Folks are going to RSVP for my event. So now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to save it. And then I'm going to see on the left hand side what that data actually rents. So I'm logged in right now as Nation Builder. So that's why my name is Nation Builder. And you'll notice that I haven't given any money yet. So that's not great for me. But as I said, this will be dynamic and unique to every single person based on the contextual data you have on them. So then the last kind of piece of this puzzle is to add that recipients list. So we're going to go in here and we're going to grab that filter that we created, right? So we're going to grab our Sydney petition signers and we're going to update our recipients. And great, we have got our 25 people. That list has grown, right, since we created it. The reason being is because it's dynamic, right? A filter is dynamic. As people are signing that petition, it is growing the audience. So you're always able to get in front of the most people at the right time. And then the last piece of this is where you would review and you would send it out. This is a training nation. So you'll notice here that I'm getting a big old red flag saying I'm not allowed to send it. Um, but you would normally either be able to send it right now or to schedule it. So with eight minutes left, that was kind of all the content I had for you all today. Um, so I'm going to flip back to the uh, deck and just kind of run through some of our, if I can get there, uh, just some kind of reflections. As I do, please pop questions in the chat. I'm really excited to kind of hear from everyone, see how this content has landed. Um, so please do go ahead and pop your questions in the chat for me. All right. So to recap, influence no longer comes from trust. Sorry, no longer comes from authority. It comes from trust. And in order to build trust, we need good relationships with our supporters. Those good relationships require us to draw upon how we know someone, what's important to them, how have they engaged with us. And to do this, we need to save their information in one central location. Digital organizing is the practice of storing data about a person in order to ultimately organize your community. And tags can be a very handy attribute to add to a person's profile, whether that be in real life, on a spreadsheet, or within a database. We always need calls to action in our social media posts to get supporters to sign up so that we can actually start to build a relationship with them. And it's our responsibility as people in the nonprofit industry to provide opportunities for our followers to sign up whenever we speak to them or wherever we are, whether that's Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or in person or TikTok, who knows? It's our responsibility to create the ability and the opportunity. If we think back to that list of opportunities, right? Create that opportunity for people to engage with you. And then lastly is having a landing page, right? So we went through today that petition page, um, but creating somewhere for folks to land. It offers and it allows your supporters to, again, get that opportunity to exchange some information about themselves in order to be more involved with your organization. So we have now officially reached the end of everything I had planned for today's session. Um, so I'm going to pop this here, questions. Uh, you can contact me. Um, my email address is my name at nationbuilder.com. 
Um, and I know that the amazing Connecting Up team will be sending out both this deck as well as the recording. And we do also have a partnership with Connecting Up. Um, so there'll be more information about that in the, um, in the follow-up email. Thank you very much, Sasha. It's a wonderful webinar. And I saw it's really interactive as well. And then I do really like those very practical examples. It's so much easier to understand. And for me as well, because I, I'm learning at the same time. So it's really good. And uh, so I see, yeah, because the questions is basically running in between the webinars. So I guess there's no more questions for now. So before we finish, do you have any Thing to add just thank you everyone for your time i really really appreciate it and like i said reach out to me where if you ruminate on it and you've got questions that come up i'm more than happy uh, to engage lovely thank you very much and then as sasha just mentioned we are going to send you the deck and the presentation in one to two business days so there's uh, also a short survey at the end after this so it will be really great if you can help us to complete the survey so that we do understand your needs and then we can tailor the content as well. All right, so I guess everyone is seeing my screen now. So it's basically an upcoming event. This is a really wonderful event just two days after on the 9th of December. So it's planning your content calendar for 2022. So this webinar is mainly about how to diversify and how to invest your budget onto the social media next year. So it's really a good opportunity for you to learn uh, how to use the great tips and then how to use some like some tricky method in order for you to maximize the exposure as well as to help you to develop the best content for your brands and for the not-for-profit organizations. So if you're interested, feel free to register through this QR code. And also these will be included onto the uh, follow-up email as well. All right, thank you very much. And thank you, Sabine, again. So I just saw your uh, text about, thank you, great webinar, really like the product. And of course, thank you so much, Sasha, for today's webinar. Thanks for your effort and your donating your time. Absolutely. All right. Lovely. Thank you, all of you. We'll see you very soon next. Goodbye.